All right. This is also from Chapter 12, but this is on matrices. And in this part of the lesson, I want to cover exactly what uh, you would need to do if you were doing these things by hand. Um, so, first of all, a matrix is really just an ordered set of numbers. It comes across in rows and columns, so, you know, like 2, 1, 3, 0, negative 1, 2, 1, 3, 2 is a matrix, or 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 1, 1 is a matrix. So they have a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns. So this matrix has three rows and three columns, and we call it a three by three. This one has three rows and two columns. Um, if I have something like this, I can do matrix arithmetic. So for instance, if I wanted to say 2a, that means I multiply every entry by 2. So in this particular case, I end up with 4, 0, 2, 2, negative 2, 6, 6, 4, and 4 is the result of that. I can also add two matrices, but to add or subtract, I have to have exactly the same shape. So A and A cannot be, or A and B cannot be added to each other. But I could add um, 2, 1, 0, 0, 3, 4 to B, as defined up here. And I get 2 plus 1 is 3, 3, 3, 0, 2, 5. And since each of these are 3 by 2, the answer is a 3 by 2. There's some call for being able to do calculations like this, but most of the time the problems that we are doing are because we can use matrices to um, simplify calculations with some systems of equations. And so there are matrix multiplication is the primary skill we need for that. Right. For a matrix to be multiplied, what you're going to do is you're going to take a matrix that's n by m and multiply it to a matrix that's m by, let's say, p. The key thing is those two numbers have to be the same. The number of columns of the first equals the number of rows from the second. And if so, the answer will be an n by p matrix, number of rows from the first, number of columns from the second. The rule says if I have A times B equals matrix C, and each element in A is A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, etc., then what I end up doing, so using A's for the first and B's for the second to get C's for the answer, each C element is the sum of the product of everything out of a single row in A and a single column in B going through all of the various elements in this direction that they're in common. Okay? And I don't think that's especially helpful, but if we do an example of this, uh, this is 3 by 3, this is 3 by 2, so I can do A times B. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I always find it helpful, I use my left hand and run across, and my right hand and go down. So this is 2 times 1, plus 1 times 2, plus 3 times 3. And all of that together gets me the first element. And then I move down to this row, first column, and I take second row, first column, 0 times 1, negative 1 times 2, 
plus 2 times 3. And finally down to the bottom, 1 times 1, 2 times 3, 3 times 2. And now I'm going to do this for the second column. So 2 times 0, 1 times negative 1, 3 times 1. Zero times zero, negative one times negative one, two times one. And finally the bottom row, last column, one times zero, three times negative one, two times one. And this of course, when I simplify this, I have 2 plus 2 plus 9, so 13. 0, negative 2 and 6 is 4. 1, 6 and 6 is 13. This is negative 1 and 3 is 2. I have positive 1 and 2 is 3. Uh, negative 3 and 2 is negative 1. And so I have here my answer, and it is indeed a 3 by 2. Okay. What if I wanted to do b times a? <laughs> okay, b times a. Well, b is 3 by 2, a is 3 by 3. Those two don't match, so this is not possible. Okay, and it's quite reasonable that that can happen. Um, there are a couple of other things that we need to do, and there are a couple of special matrices. And the first of these is the identity matrix. Okay, an identity matrix is a square matrix with all ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, so one, zero, zero, one. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. But I always have 1's down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And the diagonal does need to go that direction. And the identity matrix is if I take A and multiply it times the identity matrix, I get A back. And so it's like multiplying by 1. And you could go through and test that out by actually doing the multiplication. Another matrix that's very important to us is the inverse matrix. The inverse matrix is the matrix that's defined so that A times its inverse is equal to the identity matrix. Now there are ways of using uh, row and column manipulations to get the inverse matrix. I'm not going going to worry for this course about how to find it, okay? But if you had two matrices and they were inverses, you just test to see if they are inverses. By multiplying, and you check and make sure that you do get the identity matrix. Now the reason for this is that we can take a system of equations And here I'll just take 2x plus 3y equals 7, 4x minus y equals 1. And I could write this as 2, 4, 3, negative 1. The coefficients from this side multiplied by x, y, the variables in order, is equal to 7, 1. Okay, if I tested this, what this says, if I do the multiplication 2 times x plus 3y, and down here I get 4 times x, negative 1 times y. And the top element here is equal to the top element there, which is equation 1, bottom is equal to the bottom one here. Okay, so this is a fairly simple thing to do, and so we call this writing this in a form AX equals B. So A 
is the matrix of coefficients. X is a column matrix, sometimes called a vector of variables. And B is the column matrix. I call it of the right hand sides, okay? All these things that it's equal to, the numbers over on this side. And I can do this with very large systems of equations, you know, 20 by 20. It doesn't matter. I can set this thing up fairly easily, and I've got this in a nice form. Now, the reason this is useful is because I can take this and partner it with this information up here. A inverse times AX equals A inverse times B. I'm doing the same operation to both sides. And A inverse times A is the identity matrix. And the identity matrix times anything is that anything. And so I can solve for X by taking A inverse times B. So all I have to do is find the inverse. Now again, I told you I'm not going to teach you how to find the inverse. It's a fairly complicated process. It's not impossible. If you've done this before, you'll remember how to do it with row manipulations. Um, but it's a way of solving fairly easily if you only knew how to find the inverse. The good news is we're going to see next lesson that Excel knows how to find that inverse. Now there's one other thing that we want to learn to do, and that is determinants. A determinant is a unique number that describes the size, magnitude of a matrix. Okay, not size like so many rows by columns, but how big the numbers are. And for a little determinant like this, what you do is you take these guys and multiply them together, and you subtract those guys. So 14 minus 3 is 11. And that would be the determinant of this little matrix array that I have here. If I had something larger, um, 1, 3, 0, 2, 4, negative 1, 0, 1, 3. And I wanted to evaluate this one. A common trick that's used, you can do minors and cofactors if you remember that, but there's another way to do this and I can just duplicate the first two. So I just took these first two columns and duplicated them over here. And like we go this minus that, I do this product is 12, this product is 0, this product is 0, and I add those up, okay, and I get 12. And then I'm going to do the same thing going up. That product is 0, this product is negative 1, this product is 18, I add those up, and I get 17. And you take this minus those, so 12 minus 17 is negative 5, is the determinant of that array. Okay. Now you can only do a determinant on a square matrix, so that's one of the issues with that. Now this is used because I can use another method of solving these things, it's called Kramer's Rule. And Kramer's Rule basically says that I can create some matrices, I'll call them DX and D, and that's going to be the solution for X, and DY over D is going to be the solution to Y. Now what are these Ds? Well, D is the determinant of A, which was the coefficient matrix. Okay, DX, or DY, or any of these things, is the determinant of A where we substitute in the right-hand sides for the x coefficients. 
Okay. So looking at this little system up here, D is going to be 2, 3, 4, negative 1, because those are my coefficients. All right, and so the value of that is negative 2 minus 12 is negative 14. Dx, I'm going to take this and substitute in 7, 1. So 7, 1, 3, negative 1. And now then that I've substituted into the x position, do the determinant, so negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. And so x is going to be negative 10 over negative 14, or 5 sevenths. Similarly on the y, um, I can do the same sort of game, but this time instead of substituting in the x column, I'm going to substitute into the y column. I want to find dy. So 2, 4, and then replace that with 7, 1. And so 2 minus 28 is negative 26, and y is negative 26 over negative 14. Uh, or 13 sevenths. And so I now have the answer to the system of equations. And I can do this for larger systems. And again, determinants are something that Excel is able to calculate for us. So this is an alternate way of doing this. One thing about it is if ever I end up with d equal to 0, I know that there's no solution to my system of equations. And so it's a very quick test for the fact that, you know, not all equations have solutions. Well, all I have to do is find the determinant of the coefficient matrices. And if it's equal to zero, there's no solution. All right? Uh, so that's going to be enough for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll start trying these same skills out using Excel.